This is an example of, I believe this one's Japanese knotweed. There are actually three knotweeds. Uh, there's Himalayan and there's giant. This one could be giant, but uh, it is a knotweed. And the characteristics of knotweed is it's got a bamboo-like stalk, though it's not a bamboo. It uh, has nice big leaves. Some of them do flower. Uh, but the problem with this plant is it has an underground root system that can go as deep as three meters. It is impossible to dig up. If you leave one small piece in the ground, this is what happens. This is an example of a knotweed I tried to kill by keeping a plastic bag. It grew in the plastic bag. So you can imagine if you leave a little piece in the ground, it's just going to keep popping up. So the only way you can kill a knotweed is by herbicide and it should be professionally applied and that is the responsibility of not only the municipality and the Port Authority because this is on federal land, it is the responsibility of the um, invasive plant councils and we've got one for the Pacific, the, the Northwest, the office is based in um, Prince George and they're the, the councils are the ones that actually hire the teams that come and apply the herbicides. The sites have to be monitored for several years. The sign will go up stating that it's been herbicide has been applied so you can't dig it up or anything. So but since I started researching this topic, I, I gave a talk to the uh, for the Transitions Garden series about five weeks ago. There were about a dozen people there and I thought, well a dozen isn't enough. <laughs> We've got to get the community has to get educated about this plant. So um, Anyhow, the city is now aware of the problem. I understand they're going to be doing a, a forum and also hopefully educating the community about this plant uh, and other invasive species. I'm also concerned about Scotch broom, which is why I started this project to begin with. So I think we need to get going on this plant in particular.